stirring the coffee with chopsticks using the vortex method, the only true way to optimize the taste of your coffee. At the molecular level, good morning, welcome to the Daybreak Show. I am the Sultan. We'll get started, but first, coffee. Actually, this is called Daybreak Coffee by Caribou Coffee Brand. How could I not get Daybreak? Come on, right? Nice, as it drips down my chin. Get a little too enthusiastic about having my first cup of coffee, and it is a little bit later today. So what's happening on my side of YouTube, Gab, Twitter, goal talk, kicking you in the butt a little bit about reaching your goals rather than just watching me. If you can watch me and not want to achieve something more that I am not doing my job, so that's why I talk about you reaching goals. Two, positive relationship talk. What I'm not doing is shit talking people and shit posting all over social media. Not going to do it. It seemed like the thing to do for a while. And then all of a sudden, you just wake up from it, from that stupid slumber, the social media slumber. And you realize that you say things on social media that you would never say to people's face, and people say things to you that they never say to your face. And then you're arguing with people who you don't know. You're arguing with stupid emojis and avatars. And you're like, what the hell am I doing? Happens to everybody. So positive relationship talk. Number three, how to be trimmer and healthier. And I want to be a living example of that. You've watched me trim down and muscle up over the years, and that has been a really good thing for me and also an inspiration for you, fat ass. Just kidding. Tips and motivation and examples to make more money and working smart. I will always bang that drum about creating new profit centers, income streams, I don't care what it is. Yeah, but I'm on Social Security. Yeah, but I got a Monday through Friday job. That Listen, you have no security. If you have a job, you have no security. You could get a slip saying that you're gone. One day you go into work and they eliminated your job. It can happen, unless you own the company, of course. The reality is this. Uh, my part-time job that I work at tried to get rid of me three times because I wouldn't take the... All right? Three times. And of course now, there's no proof that it's effective at all. And who is the winner now? I, I was a winner all along. I just wasn't going for the bullshit. I hope you didn't, but if you did, don't do it anymore. That was a big IQ test. So you've seen my journey. You've seen how to grow a pair and say no, saying no is an act of rebellion. You, Some of you just fell right in line, man, right in lockstep in the past couple of years. You know, you spent the last two years wearing masks, social distancing, staying inside, getting injections. What the actual fuck is going through your head? Do you believe everything that the social media and television tells you? That's your first mistake. Watching the Daybreak Show is an act of rebellion. So welcome to the bright side. Welcome to the right side. I hope you sign up for my free unstuck newsletter at georgebruno.com where I talk about stuff like this all the time. And, you know, some of you are in a tight spot. Some of you. And it's my hope that you will see something on the Daybreak Show, hear something that ignites a fire in you to get you to move and change something. Change something in your life. And for some of you, if you don't have a reason to laugh or chuckle, probably one of the smaller reasons is that some people watch this for entertainment purposes and just get a laugh. And I'm okay with that. Women get popular on social media based on what nature gives them. Hmm. Men get half that popularity based upon what they create of themselves. Women shake their booty. Men show results of training, business creation, nice cars, lifestyles. 
there's a difference between the way women do social media and the way men do social media. Why? Because men and women are different. We are not the same. Everything we do is different. I could do anything a man can do. Can you grow a beard? <laughs> that usually shuts them down right away. Men compete, women choose. All the time. All the time. Men compete for everything in life. Women get a chance to choose. There's not a lot of competition with women. There might be com competition amongst women. But when it comes to love, when it comes to companionship, men have to literally compete against other men with salary, muscles, biceps, looks, hair, grooming, beards, the cars they drive. Women just go, I'll take that one. They don't have to do anything. Even fat, unattractive women have men orbiting around them at all times. Men and women are different. Here's a question. Should I start producing video content? My answer is always yes. Short form content such as YouTube Shorts and Instagram Reels is a great place to start. It gets you focused and it gets you producing something. It starts to get eyeballs of future customers on you and gets you in the creation groove. That's super important to start being a creator and not a consumer be a maker and not a taker have you lived all these years on earth and did not learn anything can you imagine at the end of your life learning all that you have and you never taught anybody anything or you did nothing but criticize people that would suck what a what a way to end a life oof One of my favorite Halloween jokes is, Oh my God, there's a human skeleton in my house. Actually, it's inside of my skin, and I have total control over it. It does what I want it to do. It creates what I want it to create. It earns what I want it to earn. That's the skeleton in my house. What's the skeleton in your house doing? Try to weave that into Halloween a little bit. <laughs> Lewis Smeeds. I used to think this was a cool thing. When I married my wife, I had no sense of what I was getting myself into. How could I know how much I would change? My wife has lived with at least five different men since we wed, and each of the five has been me. Lewis Smeeds. Kind of a sanctimonious self-deprecation. All right, Lewis, but you've lived with 22 different women. A lot of times the, the Christian leaders and writers who I thought were really cool, for decades, I liked Lewis Smeads, decades, and then it occurred to me, here's a man putting himself down again. Christian men, stop it. She's not your better half. She's not the boss. There are reasons why she married you, because you were the better choice at the time. Let's get real. I don't know why she married me. I don't know how you put up with me. You know, the annual anniversary. Happy anniver happy 25th anniversary to my better half. I don't know how you put up with me all these years. Dude, how do you put up with her? The 22 different personalities that she has. But instead, you got to self-deprecate. Hmm. How about happy anniversary to my lovely wife? That will suffice. That's good. You don't have to put yourself down and gain brownie points. I know you've trained yourself to put yourself down to make her happy. Enough of that. I don't care if you've been married 25 years. Happy anniversary to my lovely wife is enough. One fellow says, thank you for all your pearls of wisdom. I'm starting to understand what it means to be a man, 19 years old. I'm searching for the love of my life, and your pointers are helping me find her. 
Okay. Single ladies who want that husband, get rid of the crime scene bed, pillows, and all the bedding. Replace it all and have it consecrated and blessed for the husband who God will provide. Like guys, you know, like you, you meet a girl. <clears throat> like you go to her house. You end up in her bed. You don't want to think about what else has happened in that bed. That bed was a crime scene last weekend. And now you're in it. Ladies, moaning and groaning that you're lonely, you don't have a companion, you don't have a husband. Buy a new bed, buy new pillows. I ain't laying in that bed. I'm not touching those fucking sheets. I don't want to put my head on that pillow that some dude used to prop your ass up. Hell no. Ladies, get rid of everything in the bedroom. Get all new stuff, even the carpeting. Even the carpeting. Because if I came in there with a black light, the damn place would glow like a crime scene. Don't invite me into your crime scene life. Get everything new. And if you got to put a ribbon, like a do not cross, do not enter sign across the doorway, then do it. And if you got to sleep on the couch until you meet your husband, and then the first man in that bed will be your fiancé, will be your husband. I don't have a man. There's no good men out there. Your bed tells a different story, lady. Imagine that. Imagine that. Imagine getting a brand new bed and bedding and then having it blessed and consecrated for your husband. And men, don't disrespect yourself anymore by sleeping in these crime scene beds. Contrary to popular belief, I have saved a few marriages. Actually, about two marriages a month. I get the emails and the notes. It's documented, because normally I say save the man, not the marriage. And I can say that it's definitely God, and it's not me. Here's a woman that writes me, and she says, <clears throat> Men should heed your advice. Once my husband began to pay attention to these videos that I've always conveniently listened to in his presence, so she listens to the Daybreak Show while he's tinkering and doing stuff. And he'll hear me say something and go, hmm, Who's that? Once my husband began to pay attention to these videos, our marriage did a 180 after years of his neglect, BS, excuses, and whining. I had one foot out the door, but he has taken a positive lead and I am happily following. A side effect of this has been lots of intimacy. Ooh. I'm still pretty surprised at this because I was certain that I never wanted him to touch me again. It's amazing what a man's positive attitude, strength, tenderness, consideration, and leadership can do for a marriage. <sighs> With regret, I have to say that the Daybreak Show saves marriages too. I'm joking when I say that. Hey, I'm happy. If it did something good for your marriage, then that was the unintended consequence. But I'm happy. I'm happy about that. I'd like to see how many marriages split because she joined an MLM, a multi-level marketing company, and she met network marketing Chad at a meeting somewhere. Oh, we're having our regional meeting. The regional meeting of diamond distributors, or whatever they call them. Ruby, pearl, diamond, gold, platinum, you know, whatever. We have a meeting in Chicago this weekend. Okay, honey, have fun. Have fun. And then she meets Network Marketing Chad, who is a platinum distributor. And then she starts going to a lot of meetings. And the next thing you know, she's unhappy with the marriage. Hmm. Network Marketing Chad. <laughs> it's so funny.
some guys can just like chat out wherever they go. For many years, I was like that. Just like everything was like fish in a barrel for me. Everything. I know you can't imagine it. You're looking at an old guy with a white beard. Those days are behind me. But my God, everything was just like, like a kid walking into a candy store with a sign on the wall that said, free, take whatever you want. Or try and sample everything. Which I did, and I'm sorry for, and I completely regret it. And sometimes there's a few of us that get together and talk about stuff like that. I had that talk with Roosh a couple weeks ago. And he's going to come on the channel real soon. And we're going to talk about stuff like that. Talk about a new life. A new life. I know I've created a lot of crime scenes myself. Quite a few. I'll never forget the first time <clears throat> I was chatting with my brother and like we were saying stuff like I can't believe men find it hard to find a woman or to get a little boom boom like it just like what like it's difficult you don't know what to do you don't know what to say you don't know how to approach a woman come on man like I couldn't it just I couldn't fathom it I couldn't fathom that it was just natural and of course it didn't hurt being raised by a player So why did I do a 180 on all of this stuff? Getting banged around a little bit through divorce and all this kind of stuff didn't, that probably didn't help. That kind of makes you stop, drop, and what, stop, drop, and roll? Is that what they say when you catch fire? Stop, drop, and roll? Stop, breathe, and think. When I was growing up, every woman wore a head covering in church, whether it be a scarf or kind of a lacy thing. No bare shoulders, cleavage, or form-fitting clothing. It wasn't an issue, and nobody felt oppressed. Every man had a Sunday suit, cleaned his shoes, and the kids lined up quietly. Kind of seems foreign now. And what's happening in Iran right now, I can tell you there's nothing grassroots about that. Somebody is starting trouble somewhere. I have no problem with women being covered up. Requiring them to cover up, that's like a different story. But I know women who are converting to Christian orthodoxy who are purposely, by their own will, wearing a head covering when they go to church. And it's a beautiful thing. You want to send women back to the dark ages? Honey, you sent yourself back to the dark ages. Take one look at your bedroom. You want to talk about dark ages? You were just having caveman sex in your bedroom this past weekend with a guy that you met as you were swiping on some dating site. And he'll be there until you swipe the next guy because men compete and women choose. Leaves are falling all around. It's time I was on my way. Thanks to you, I'm much obliged for such a pleasant stay. Led Zeppelin, 1969, the song Ramble On classic song, right? Happiness is a lot of things, and one of those things is positive cash flow. Positive cash flow basically just means that there's more money coming in to your life than there is going out of your life. If you are in a legal battle with an ex, temper your expectations of what your attorney can do Temper your expectations of the attorney being able to calm you down. It ain't going to happen. They take you to court. They represent you. They don't feel it the way you do. You need a second set of eyeballs on the situation for your emotional stability and how you respond to being triggered by your ex. Nobody can push your buttons or trigger you like your ex. Nobody. This is why I am here as a coach. I don't give legal advice, but I can give you strategies for sanity, clarity, and reason as you're dealing with the situation. If you need coaching, just shoot an email to me, gb at georgebruno.com. Them, did you hear that Sneeko got canceled? My response is, who? 
Gentlemen, be about your business. Keeping up with pop culture and who's hot and who's not, who got banned, who got taken off of social media, who lost their Twitter account, their YouTube account, be about your business. How much of what you do is about other people's business and uplifting and elevating other personalities? How about you uplift and elevate your own? Oh, I forgot you don't have a personality. Get one. I'm not condemning you. What I am saying is this, is that you are worth elevating. You are worth elevating and creating a movement around, even if it's a movement of effectiveness and excellence in your life. Keeping up with pop culture, never ever put money in your pocket or paid a bill or improved your sleep or improved your health. One person mocked me the, when I was talking about niching down when you're marketing to people. The hardest thing you have to do is niche down and become known for one thing. People need to be able to describe you and your product in one sentence. What do you do? You don't even have 30 seconds. Remember in networking meetings, we had elevator pitches, a 30 second description of what you do. You don't even have that. You got about six seconds to tell people what you do. If they want to know more, then they'll ask you. They'll make a reason to listen to you. But if you can't describe what you do on the back of a damn napkin, you're talking too much, you're thinking too much, you're wishing and hoping too much. What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? Put it down below. Tell me. So what do you do? Right? You meet people at a networking meeting. What's the first question? Hey, how's it going? I'm George. So what do you do? That's what we do. Describe what you do in about six to seven seconds. Can you do that? If you can't, you're talking too much. My mental and emotional constitution and crisis response training is such that I can listen to horror story after horror story and keep a composed head and guide a client to feeling more hopeful, provide options and solutions, and be there for support if shit hits the fan in their life. Some of that training was on-the-job training. Some of that stuff you can only learn by going through it yourself. That is one of the ways that I remain composed and I become your source of sanity, clarity, and reason when you are going through some shit. I'm a big believer in sanctions. Sanctioning the bullshit story that you keep telling yourself why you can't do this or do that. Lose weight, build muscle, giving yourself a raise. Everything has gone up, hasn't it? Everything. Gas has gone up. Groceries have gone up, just like the, the butter that I get. This, I get this Amish butter from Lancaster County. It's like a two pound block of butter. It used to be $7.99, very unsophisticated, high in butter fat, and put in like parchment and rolled up. Not, it's not a sophisticated little box of butter. It's literally a chunk of butter rolled up in parchment. $7.99, you know how much it is now? $15.99. It literally doubled in price. Everything has gone up. Even your pay has gone up. Think about this. Butter has gone up 100%. Gas has gone up 50%. Your salary has gone up 3%. Hmm. And you're scared of asking your boss for a $2 an hour raise. Don't you want to put yourself in a situation where you give yourself a raise? That's the beauty of being self-employed or having at least one income stream that you have control over. You can do this. And with that, finish your coffee and I'll see you on the next Daybreak Show, your home of sanity, clarity, and reason. If you are a watcher of Red Pill and Manosphere videos, here's your key to success. Watch them, take notes, and then when you're done taking those notes, rip them up and do the exact opposite. You will succeed in life. <laughs>
Deep in the shadows, I know it's hard to put one foot in front of the other. Ah, so far is the ego. Where do we start? You can learn to discover a million stars. Here in the shadows, I know you're scared. Take my hand together. We'll make a stand We've got to fight to find a way Dare to fall to find out what's to say No more hate Just admit that you're just afraid Time to let go of all your fears and pride Stand up beside me Don't you hide We can build a better place If we can just find a way Then we can live a better day Rise from the ashes From the anger From the war Let's come together Lift your spirit for the cause We should be equal Should we live free all together, one and all, let's build a dream. Better day.